Crystal Ball College Football. I'm your host, Grayson Grunhafer. Let's talk about the Wisconsin Badgers today. How about that? Um, Luke Fickle doing an outstanding job. They're attacking the transfer portal really hard, especially on the offensive side of the ball. So I figured we should definitely talk about it. They, they've really made some intriguing moves. Luke Fickle went out, got Phil Longo to come in and coach, uh, be the offense coordinator. Um, and, and he's a guy who just has a great track record. Um, what he did at North Carolina, phenomenal. Now he's at Wisconsin. And now they're trying to figure out a way to build on an offense that was 77th in the country last year in scoring really, really bad. Really, really bad a year ago. They got to get better in that department. And Luke Fickle, first-year head coach, obviously coming in off of his great run at Cincinnati. Lots of momentum there. Lots of momentum. That's a program that I'm kind of circling as, hey, you know, watch out for 2023 as far as a team that could be trending in a very different direction than they were a season ago. So before I get into their additions, I want to talk about their scoring offenses over the past few seasons. So since 2017... Here's where they've ranked. 28th, 62nd, 23rd, 89th, 85th, 77th. That's not very good. And that's very inconsistent. So during the years that they were really good, which was 2017 and 2019, really good, you know, 28th, 29th, that's not really good, but it's it's very serviceable. It's good, right? They won 13 games in 10 games. So you're basically telling me if they have a top 30 offense, Based on the past few years, they're pretty much an 11, 12 win type team. They're a Big Ten title contender when they have a top 30 offense. When they don't, here's what they've done 2018, eight wins. 2020, they were four and three. So, I mean, if you kind of average that out, that's probably a, a seven and five, eight and four type year. 2021, nine wins. And then 2022, seven wins. So, basically, a seven, eight win program when they're outside uh, the top, I guess in this you know stretch outside the top 60. So can Luke Fickle make this offense a top 30 offense with Phil Longo? I don't see why not. I don't see why not at all. I think that that's a key stat for this season is just the simple fact that when they are pretty good, Pretty good being, you know, a top 30 offense. They are really good record-wise because the defense has always been really good, and I trust Luke Fickle to go in there, produce a very good defense, and now it's just can the offensive side catch up quickly. And I think that's what they've been trying to do in the transfer portal. It's an area they've addressed very quickly. So they lost Graham Mertz. He's going to Florida, but they went out and they targeted Tanner Mordecai, the quarterback at SMU, pretty much immediately. Like, the moment he entered the transfer portal, it came out that he was likely going to Wisconsin. I mean, it took no time at all. Don't ask me how that's possible, but that's just what happened. So, they found a way to find their guy and land their guy very quickly, and I think that speaks a lot to kind of what they're trying to build there. And it also speaks a lot to Tanner Mordecai that Phil Longo was basically like, this is the guy we need to have. Luke Fickle played against Tanner Mordecai multiple times at Cincinnati, Again, this was his guy. And so for both these guys to just come to this agreement, go out, find that guy, land him, makes me think that they really see special things for him uh, in this Wisconsin offense. As far as Tanner Mordecai goes, two seasons at, two seasons at SMU, 7,152 yards passing, 72 touchdowns, 22 interceptions, 66% completion percentage. He's very good and very productive, and he's going to go in there and make this offense even more productive, Um, you know, more productive than it has been in recent years, that's for sure, Uh, because they have not had dynamic quarterback play in recent seasons, and it's been very much run the football, try to run the clock out, bring on the defense, Um, and that works to a certain extent, but then you start playing the best teams in the conference, and that strategy does not always work, as we've seen when they've had bad offenses. So Terran Mordecai immediately comes in, raises the ceiling. He's only going to be there for a year. Um, So they still have to figure out ways that they're going to build depth behind them. That's exactly what they did. They went out, got Nick Evers to transfer from Oklahoma. They got Braden Locke, who transferred from Mississippi State. Both those guys have four years left. Um, And, you know, Nick Evers, ESPN 300 guy uh, in his class. Braden Locke set all kinds of records for Texas high school football at Rockwall, was a borderline four-star type prospect. 
those two guys decided, hey, you know, Terry Marca is going to be there for a year. Now we get an opportunity to come in and be the guy right after him. And so they're going to battle it out uh, to be kind of the future of the Wisconsin program going forward. Um, very exciting stuff in that quarterback room, that's for sure. Now, as far as other additions, because, again, we're sticking with this theme of offensive production that they're bringing back. So, in addition to Tanner Mordecai, they need to figure out ways to get more explosive passing the football. Went out, got Bryson Green uh, this past weekend out of Oklahoma State. He had 584 yards and five touchdowns this past season. Very deceptive. He had 417 of those yards and all five of those touchdowns in the first seven games which coincides to when Spencer Sanders was healthy. So when they had a good quarterback, a, a I would say Spencer Sanders is probably a good above average quarterback, right? He was awesome. He was awesome on pace to be uh, a guy that was going to have probably something like 800 yards and nine touchdowns this past season. That would have been a heck of a year, 417, I mean, 584 and 5. Pretty dang good, though. Uh, after Spencer Sanders was gone in their remaining games on the schedule, he had 167 yards and no touchdowns. That's just how it is when you don't have good quarterback play. So with Tanner Mordecai there, I expect him to be the wide receiver one there and be very, very good in that offense. They also went out. They added two transfers from Cincinnati, Will Pauling, who played a little bit this past year, young guy. He's going to be a redshirt sophomore next season. And then also Quincy Burroughs, who was a three-star freshman who redshirted last year, came in when Luke Fickle was at Cincinnati. He transfers to Wisconsin as well. So two young guys with bright futures uh, to go along with a guy from USC in C.J. Williams, who's transferring from there, who if you just looked at his high school rating, he is the highest rated wide receiver prospect Wisconsin has ever landed. Huge statement there. Guy with a very high ceiling and a guy who I expect to come in, be a starter day one, and again, help anchor this wide receiving core that is pretty young, but also pretty talented. And so that's why it's important to have that mix of Bryce and Green with these three younger guys um, because he's going to give them more stability in that department. Uh, they also went out, added two offensive linemen from Cincinnati, including Jake Renfro, who was a first-team All-AAC guy back in 2021 before getting hurt this past year. Um, it's Wisconsin. They're going to be able to run the football. They're going to have a good offensive line. It really comes down to how explosive they can they be at wide receiver, at running back, and then at the quarterback position that's going to be the tell-all. And everything that I'm seeing right now is pointing in a direction where I'm seeing this Wisconsin team making a big jump in year one under Luke Fickle. So I'm not going to dive into the schedule right now. I'm not going to give you a prediction of you know their wins and losses. We're too far out for that. But I will tell you this just quickly glancing at their schedule and just seeing everything that they've done this offseason, the fact that they have Luke Fickle and Phil Longo, um, I really do think this is going to be one of my like dark horse teams going into the 2023 season and a team that I, I feel pretty strongly about winning nine or ten games uh, next year. I think Wisconsin's due for a big jump back uh, into relevancy after going seven and six this past season. So that's it for this week. Next week, we'll talk about more off-season stuff as um, just the college football off-season continues to trend and move forward. Transfer Portal is about to kind of close up for a little bit. Um, so we'll have a little bit less to talk about, but we will talk about some of the big additions that we saw uh, throughout the winter and spring months. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in to Crystal Ball College Football.